Hi everyone, I am finally back and it is so nice to be back home again and the weather has finally picked up. When we first arrived it was like 18, no actually 14 degrees. <laughs> so the temperature dropped from 33 to 14, that was quite tough to, to manage. I had to like put loads of two sets of pajamas and, and keep warm and it was just, I was freezing for about three days and then fine and now today is 21 so beautiful um, perfect by me i think this is the temperature that should be uh, the most uh, in uk because anything more becomes a little bit difficult but anyways i thought i will make a video for you which is slightly different um to how i usually do these videos when i go away for like a longer uh, vacation and generally i do a video of the things that I pack to take with me and, and this time I didn't do that and I thought I will actually do a video showing you all of the things that I have taken uh, with me so this literally came out of my suitcase and I left them on my desk till I was ready to film and I will show you exactly what I have taken and the items that I actually used and didn't use and Probably not a surprise to me anyway. I ended up doing very little. Probably the least amount of art in the th just over three weeks um, that I was away um, because of, uh, you know, Mason, uh, Mason being a naughty boy, really. So, um, what did I take? I took quite a few sketchbooks with me. And I thought I will be at it no matter what, things will be fine and I will get some time just to myself and actually I feel a lot more relaxed now that we are back home and uh, he is back to his normal routine and back to, uh, thank goodness, nursery. Thank goodness to nursery, yes. So anyway, I have taken four... Uh, sketchbooks with me. Now this one I'm just quite desperate to finish uh, because it's only a few pages left and I think this is well, what I will be doing in the uh, coming weeks. Um, this is, um, I showed you this sketchbook a few times, it's just like a little swatch book slash experiment book. So if I get any new watercolors I tend to sort of swatch them out here and play a little bit. So it's not um, you know, my main swatch book, which I have separately, and it houses all of my watercolor swatches in there that I have, including watercolor pencils, etc. This is just a fun little book here. I also do transparency tests with some of them and just random things like I decide to mix just two colors or whatever, and you know. So, and then some brush marks, um, experimenting with that, loads of different things. And surprise, surprise, I didn't get to do anything at all in here. So that was number one. Second one that I got is uh, this one here. So this is, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, this is Stillman and Burn Beta Series, which is the thicker paper and it's designed for watercolor. And the info is 270 GSM. I will leave the links below for you, so the correct sizes for these sketchbooks, if you're interested to look them up. Then, um, size-wise, there is the second one, Good Impressions. The These ones, I buy loads of them. I still have quite a few um, unopened um, inserts. So these I bought originally for my B6 Traveler's Notebook. Let me just grab Mr. Darcy by Chic Sparrow. This is Butter Drum. I know um, you want to know when, when, when I show it to you. So yeah, this, this was super, uh, this is a super fun uh, way of, you know, keeping our journal. However, this is a different paper. It's Tamoy River. Again, I will leave all the info below and I thought to take this one with me just to use it for kind of sketches and, 
you know, some sort of experimental. Now, what I've done here is this one. No, actually, no, I didn't do this one. This one I did at home, funny enough, before going away. So I haven't done here anything at all. So second one that I didn't do anything. And then um, I've got two more, which are by Stillman and Burn as well. And again, I'll show you the third one, which I didn't even touch. And you will know that because the last illustration in here happens to be the ones that you already seen. So I filmed those before leaving and I didn't touch them. So this is um, this book I keep for like uh, floral, botanical, quick illustrations really. And this is a hardcover and also beta series. So the paper is thicker again. Um, so it's the same series, but a different format and hardcover versus the soft cover. Speaking of soft cover, this is the final sketchbook that I took with me and it's also by Stillman and Burn and it's soft cover and this time it's a um, alpha series. And alpha series means that it's more for like mixed media um, and it doesn't take as much water as the beta series does, which is specifically designed for watercolor. Okay, so what have I done? The stuff that I did... So let me see. So I've done this one, which is illustrating um, the palette that I have taken with me. And I specifically designed it, the colors that I picked specifically were for this summer. So you can see it really has been used. Um, I wish I was able to use it more, but it is what it is. So I'll definitely be using it now that I'm back. And these are the colors. Um, I will try to link the videos below for you to see all of the colors here and how I put this palette together because I filmed the process. So if you're interested, um, have a look in the information below. So next page, this was the same day that I did this little illustration. It kind of started over here and then I felt it was too small and kind of at the bottom of the page so about the noise I had to stop there um so yes yeah, so I basically um added these flowers and that was fun this is just watercolor with one of the white ink pens that I just or gel pens rather that I just bought recently and it's so much fun I will uh, show it to you in a second and this is here then a couple more pages I've done this one which was really loads of fun and this exercise I got inspired from this book I don't remember now which one it was but basically there is um, there was a little exercise here somewhere Anyway, um, I'll, I'll talk to you about this book in a minute a little bit more. So yeah, that was uh, loads of fun to work with, um, particularly Mars Black. The watercolor is so much fun. Let's see, I've got it here. So it's this one here. And um, I mixed it a lot in the hair where, where you can see a lot of granulation and it mixes beautifully in with other colors because it's not like a jet black watercolor. It's, it's very granulating and you can still maintain the color but adding that sort of grayish, warm grayish um, granulation in there. Um, and then finally, <laughs> All I managed to do is this little thing here, which I really adore. Um, so these are the flowers of a kiwi plant from my parents' garden. And it's a beautiful um, little shrub. And the flowers actually have this apricot sand, which is just so beautiful. And yeah, so I've done, um, I illustrated this from a picture and um, on Instagram I put the the picture of like the base color kind of thing and then you know how you build it up onto something a little bit more um, 
saturated and a little bit more um, contrasted in terms of the lines and how you bring things a little bit more out. So this is it, very, very little indeed, if you consider that this was probably within uh, almost four weeks, under four weeks, but over three weeks. So yeah, very little, but it is what it is. So having said that, I also brought this um, Illustrated Faith mat with me and it's the bible mat i think it's called but it is fantastic for many many reasons especially if you are using very thin paper like this so if you don't want any indentation on the next page you just basically kind of stick it here do your artwork and then you will only have the indentation on the other side of the paper and nothing printed on here because if you don't do that you will end up on thin paper with these loads of little lines from the previous drawings I don't know if you can't can see that or not so that is great the other thing what this mat is great for is when I was using this palette because it's rather large kind of flat area and you can't close it after you're finished because you know, there will be water here everywhere. So what I do to prevent dust from going into these um, wells, I basically just take this mat and I put it on top and kind of air gets underneath there to dry the watercolors well, but uh, prevents it from the dust sticking to it. So that's a really good thing to do. Another um, reason why this is quite good for example if I am illustrating on the right side of the paper so on this side um, and you know I have little space so what I do is I take this mat and I place it here and then I um, put my watercolors on top of it so this kind of again um, protects the paper underneath so you wouldn't create mess or accidentally spill some watercolor here and then basically I am working on this page very close to the watercolor uh, if I have limited space and in general I find it quite um, quite convenient so this mat has served me really well um, not only on this travel but uh, actually since I got it I've been using it daily like pretty much like I'll show you where is this one little guy uh, as distress prayer by Ranger when I watercolor I use it so yeah good little tool so let's move on to the brushes so the brush that I have taken with me and I actually took it the way this has been sent to me by Jackson's when I bought it and I decided that was great packaging so what I've done is I just um, used this packaging to travel with because it's a little cardboard and it's um, quite good to avoid bending them and when I was packing I just kind of put it between the sketchbook so that it's nice and flat um, so I finally got my uh, Jackson's quill brush. This is 10 zero, which was my first brush. I'm trying to think, I think this is my third one now, if I'm not mistaken or not. Anyway, so this is a super, super gorgeous brush. I love it. And I forgot it there last summer. So I brought it back with me now and I have two of those brushes, which I really adore. So they go there. And this brush I bought just before traveling actually and I've taken it with me because it's a really lovely brush. It's a silver black velvet round number four. I still haven't found my number eight which I have bought but um, yeah so hopefully I'll find it someday. But the number four is great for a small kind of project. Those flowers that I showed you for example it is great for this size of work so obviously something quite um, small ish and it as you can see all these fine lines is what I have created with the tip of this brush and it is uh, comes to a beautiful tip as well as you know just just little perfect little brush and um, 
little washes if you want to do with it but obviously quite small great brush okay so it has definitely become one of my favorites along with the quill uh, tan zero this is obviously a lot bigger as you can see so if i need a larger brush this is my favorite um again all the links will be provided down below for your convenience so i don't want this video to be too long but um i have mentioned the palette for you and all the colors that will be linked below i'll just probably show you a close-up of the swatch list in case you don't want to see the other videos but basically this is what it looks like so i've got uh five got 20 colors in here and this is what they look like as you can see i haven't picked any blues this is a lilac color and i'm not too keen on blue sometimes or actually in general so for this palette particularly i decided to just stay away uh, from blues um there are certain blues that i really like and sometimes depending what time of the year it is and what colors i feel inspired by i will add a couple of blues but this time i wanted to add two kind of unique purples and that i was happy with i was happy with loads of greens yellows and oranges and reds and all that kind of stuff so that's that now let's move on to this book i will do a full review for this book but it is so super super gorgeous and i actually saw it days like i think yeah a few days before traveling on um um i hope i'm not butchering his name theo yichi um his channel and it really i really fell in love with this little book because it's so cute it's so little full of stuff that i absolutely love different techniques um different it's it's all watercolor so it's great for ideas as it says the watercolor ideas book and it, it is exactly what it promises and i love small books as well because you know i want to sometimes take something with me when i'm traveling and there has been so much that i wanted to try but like i said it's uh it was impossible so i will definitely work off this book um more but just to give you the idea of how versatile and pretty some of these pieces are very very different um styles and very modern very contemporary so that's what i'd like to say and yeah so that's for that and then finally let's look at what i got um, in my felicity jane little pouch here so i love taking this when i'm going somewhere and here is what i took with me so i'll take everything out it's a great size and it fits nicely so it's got a little pocket in there which is what uh, this is what was in the pocket so it was the alter new uh, date stamp and some washi which I just needed for well I thought if I need in case I need to stick something down or whatever so that came in the pocket I also had this little extra washi which I didn't use um, I didn't use the other washi as well, I just used a date stamp a couple of times. And so yeah, so this is the empty um, tape and I love this color because it's like a flesh color. Really nice. And then to go with the date stamp, I took the Ranger Archival ink in shadow gray, which is a beautiful color. It's exactly like this um, sticker here. It's, um, if I don't want to have that harsh date stamped on the page of my art journal and i just want like a little as it's called uh shadow gray it just looks like a little shadow um but it, you know i don't want it to be so harsh that my eye pulls to the date but i do want to remember what date it is so this is the color i like to use i'll show you if i have any other colors here no actually i don't but 
for example, even if I um, stamp the day with it, you can see it kind of looks cool. It's sort of, I don't know, it kind of looks, I like the look of it basically. Um, so that's that. And then I also um, got a few things here. Well, obviously, um, I didn't get to use the um, lemon yellow because um, this is the paint tube that I decided to take with me because if I do watercolor, I really do use up this color very quickly for mixing uh, with, with any of the colors, greens, um, any of the oranges, pinks, reds, whatever. I do use them use this color up super quickly and I didn't want to run out of it but who knew that I would have no time uh, to do um, anything for myself so yeah um, lemon yellow was never opened up for that reason then we have a few things here so I've got a Faber-Castell dust free um, eraser it's pretty good um, I'm not entirely sure what it does. I think it's supposed to create less of those um, rubber dust pieces. Um, but obviously still create some of them. It has to go somewhere. Then I also got the um, 0 0.5 millimeters um, HB pencil lead with this um, pencil. And this one is also 0 0.5, I believe. Yeah, and it is so much fun. Basically, you push the button and the tip of it comes out. So then you just draw with it. However, if you want it to go back in, because, for example, you are traveling and you don't want the nip to get broken or bent or whatever, you just um, push this little clip here and watch it. It just goes back in like that. So um, I love it. It feels nice and heavy. It has nice weight to it. And I like these rubber bits um, where you're holding it. I don't know. It just feels really good. Drawing with it is, is actually quite enjoyable. So I will try to link that for you. This pencil comes in different thicknesses, uh, lead thicknesses, so you can pick, I guess, the right one for you. And then um, I got another brush with me, which this one is great for if you're sitting outside and you're doing a little bit of painting. And this is also pencil brush, and I think this was, this is size two. I think it's a medium one. Uh, there's also a larger and a smaller one. And then I got these two pens and uh, they're exactly the same but this one I thought if I run out I have a backup but obviously not. So this is the Muji 0 0.25. Um, it's a black ink or gel pen and it's super fine. It's very very fine line so if you love it, if you love a little um, kind of fine line lining then this pan I could really recommend is one of my favorite ones however the ink is not water soluble so it's great for um, doing kind of finishing touches uh, if you want if you don't want your you know the black gel ink starting to uh, migrate into watercolor and, and make some dirty puddles or mixes um then I got this fountain pen and I didn't even touch it. So this is my uh, Lamy Safari in extra fine. And I have loaded it with, I cleaned it out first of all, and then loaded it with my favorite ink uh, of the moment, which is this, this one here, Ancient Copper. I absolutely love it. It's by uh, Diamine or diamine inks and it's just super beautiful it's water soluble and it's great for I'll show you um, for this kind of work where there's a mix of different colors but you basically get the idea that um, with with a bit of water it sort of dilutes into this gorgeousness you can use it sort of to paint with like watercolors 
um, I've done it here as well. Even the skin tone is done with that ink because it's very subtle and very kind of um, smooth, I want to say. And you can, you won't have that harsh, a defined line as you would do with a lot of inks if you work fast enough. And that is why I have loaded it, but I didn't even get to use it once. And then just in case, I brought this one with me, which is Platinum uh, Carbon Ink Fountain Pen, and it's got carbon ink inside, which is 100% waterproof, and the tip is also fine, so it's uh, great for fine lines. Now, the pen that I actually did use, uh, I did use that um, pencil that I just showed you, so I used that one. And the this one here, I and I think didn't I use this platinum carbon? Oh, I did use that fine pen, this one here for the fine lines, right at the at the end when I finished painting. Um, so I did that, and then uh, the white gel ink is this one here. So the 08 is my favorite size. The uh, 05 just doesn't flow as nice. And 08 is just a beautiful, um, beautiful kind of smooth application. And it just, it's nice and opaque. Um, I'll just give you a little swatch here while my tan is lasting and you can actually see something. So this is the tan. Tan is quite a bit uh, wider, um, which is okay for certain things, but so you can see it's so thin um, that it doesn't show up nicely. And it just, I find that it, it it's not, I don't know, like it's not opaque enough for me, maybe because of how fine the line is, I don't know, but Basically, this is what the 8 looked like on here on the paper. It's a beautifully opaque, doesn't skip, um, really super smooth and I love that. So that is it. Um, I think the video is going to be a lot longer than I anticipated. But I hope you'll enjoy it uh, regardless. So thanks for watching and see you soon.